Daily Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Andover, murder of a tobacconist. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexil on Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Ah, some cool hair. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Yes, this I is weird. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. However, the characters in the two words do not match. Yes. The I characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Right, let us compare this with... Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the... Right, let... That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter.
Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about this case, Hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, Poirot, have you found something? Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. Andover, Hampshire, population 31,200 inhabitants. To Scotland Yard, please. Jap has invested a great deal in his career. Jap is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. Alice Asher was murdered in Andover, the ABC killer's first murder. London, I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Jap appears to be snowed under. Jap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilancy. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I fear so.
Good God, Poirot, Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. The killer is mad, so he's unpredictable. We can only hope that he will commit an error. You surprise me, Poirot. I've often heard you say that even madmen follow a certain logic. I didn't realize you had such a good memory, Chief Inspector. Bien, we should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Poirot? Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture, although personally I prefer more modern buildings. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine? Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, 
It is for a padlock. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. His marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, 
The young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. The purse is full, yet again we can dismiss theft as the motive for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called? Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have her address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve?
This page won't help me. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover. Maybe the murderer? This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found, dead, on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Do not be so sure. Miss Barnard's tragic death may be a good advertisement for you. It makes one despair of human nature. Poor young girl. She was a hard-working and pleasant young woman. I didn't know her that well. She'd only been here for two summers. I know that she had a young man. He used to call for her sometimes. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him, all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. I find young people today very hard to understand. You needn't tell me that. A few weeks ago, they argued just outside the cafe. Imagine what my customers must have thought. I hope for you that it was an isolated incident. It must be difficult to keep a respectable establishment if your staff shows themselves to be so shameless. The young man only made a scene the once. Jealousy, no doubt. It must be said the young girl was very pretty. Thank you for your time, Mademoiselle Merion. You have been of great help. The customer who ordered a whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Hastings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home.
How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair. The very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor Mummy. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. What is she feeling at the moment? Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Your sister had a fiancé, I believe? Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Do you know where we might find him? He works at the estate agents, Corton Brunskill. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the ginger cats. I would like to talk with him before the chief inspector finds him.
It looks like Betty was also a music lover, the same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. She liked luxury and going out, and being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? Looking at all the... Hmm. A box of new stockings. This small key should be useful to me. I've finished with this subject. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? Record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. Something on this clock bothers me. This metal disc is stuck.
This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This metal disc is stuck. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. Something on this clock bothers me. There, that's better. Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn.
I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. I definitely need an object to make I definitely need an object I definitely I definitely need an object to I definitely I definitely need an I definitely need an object This metal disc is stuck. This metal disc is stuck. This wooden panel is blocked. I definitely need an object. I definitely need. I definitely need it. I definitely I definitely need it. I definitely need an
I've finished with this subject. Something on this clock bothers me. There, that's better. Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Look! A key! This could be useful. What a strange mechanism. Ah, something clicked on the front of the clock. This could be useful. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again. Adrian. Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding?
This looks like sulfur. This looks like sulfur. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. Just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. It looks like something goes in here. Doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. Donald, we're in the middle of recording. Sorry, Betty, but it's not wise. The doctor said you should rest your voice. You're such a killjoy sometimes. Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with assault? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course, she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now.
It looks like this woman is single, but she has feelings for someone. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she's studying in this manner? They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? He's a bright man, with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Donald appeared to be very much in love with your sister. Yes, he was mad about her. Mad, you say? Being madly in love can often be destructive, and Mr. Fraser was known for being jealous, I believe. No more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. You are a poor liar, Mademoiselle Bernard. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot, but I do not see why you are interested in our humble little crime. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent. Betty was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying, One day... One day... Well? He'd commit murder. So you were afraid that he would become our main suspect? I know that Fraser was jealous. But I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Exactly. Had you not told me about the case, I would never have dared to tell you about this little matter. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. <laughs> 